okay so let me start uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, welcome to talk number 4 of this weekend webinar series on windows of opportunities in science and engineering uh, organized by indian national young academy of sciences in yas and indian national science academy insa uh, of mumbai chapter and uh, by now you may may be knowing about more about insa and yas and if you want to know more about it you can log in to, uh, to our website insaindia.vc.in and inyas.in in and also you can follow us on inyas youtube channel uh, what what our activities we are doing uh, our inyas members are involved in you can find uh, most of the activities are there available in inyas youtube channel so with this uh, webinar series we, we started in the uh, april month in the first week of uh, weekend of april we started this webinar series and this is the talk number 4 we are uh, approaching now and uh, on behalf of all the, all, the, all the organizers of inyas and insa from the mumbai chapter i welcome you all uh, to this uh, uh, talk number 4 of this weekend webinar series uh, uh, by this uh, this uh, talk uh, talk of the title is itself is self explanatory we want to give the flavor of opportunities in uh, sciences and engineering if you go for the higher studies what are the uh, opportunities available in science and engineering that is what we are trying to give you through this webinar series uh, the first talk was given by in the series was given by uh, professor arpita mondal if any, any of uh, you have missed this talk you can always go back and find it in our inyas youtube channel it is available there so she talked about higher education opportunities after be and btech uh, and it was also very nicely received this is the first talk of the series uh, the second talk of the series was given by uh, uh, professor janvi uh, punekar uh, from iit mumbai and she has talked about s in stem relevance and opportunities and uh, that also was attractive a lot of audience in the youtube as well as well as on the zoom platform uh the third talk which was on the last weekend was by uh, given by dr suli bakshi on road map uh, to stress free research journey and uh, yeah, last week only we have heard about this talk and all these talks are available on our inyas youtube channel uh, you, you have to go to the playlist of uh, this windows of opportunities in s and e you will find all the talks are available in that Uh, so we are now coming to the talk number 4 of this uh, uh, series which will be given uh, by uh, dr sandeep bhugre uh, and on the topic of basic sciences to pursue or not to so very interesting title uh, as you can see here and uh, so he uh, professor uh, sandeep bhugre is a scientist is working as a scientist at uh, in uh, at the kolkata center of the ugc dai consortium for scientific research and indian university research center for ugc of the ugc he obtained his phd degree from university of mumbai uh, uh, based on, on the experimental program at the nuclear science center the first inter university accelerator center and was a postdoctoral researcher at the nuclear structure laboratory uh, of university of notre dame in usa uh, his primary area of research is experimental nuclear structure physics uh, based on in beam gamma ray spectroscopy with particular interest in the instrumentation and software developments associated with the domain he has been uh, one of the resource personnel in the operation of the indian national gamma array and has been involved with the digitizer based uh, pulse processing and data equations equation exercise in the recent campaign of the inda facility at vcc kolkata he has more than 90 publications in the international refereed journals to his credit uh, he has made invited presentations at several national and international uh, conferences uh, in india and abroad Uh, he has been associated with doctoral research of several scholars and has formerly been the thesis supervisor to a majority of them uh, he is serving as a guest faculty at the jadavpur university uh, in kolkata and uh, teaching courses also on nuclear instrumentation uh, in that uh, uh, university dr bhugrej interest and pursuits further extends to the domain of uh, developing methodologies and of for teaching physics experiments at ug and pg level using open source uh, hardware and software tools and he has led several national and international uh, uh, workshops on the uh, similar for the same uh, purpose uh, so today he is going to talk about the basic sciences uh, uh, mainly the what are the challenges and opportunities uh, that are involved in basic sciences uh, so with this small introduction i i now invite uh, professor gogre to deliver his talk uh, thank you dr parker uh, am i audible yes yeah as i said and i think uh, that's a wonderful introduction and i think dr parker uh, which is uh, you uh, this thing uh, humility he forgot to mention one thing that he and me have done a lot of uh, workshop basically for schools and colleges in way in remote areas of konkan and one more thing that he i can add to my resume would be he and me almost come from the same region of konkan and we always try to give back to the society uh, whatever we have uh, achieved 
as i said today is i am going to talk about uh, can i start sharing the content yes yes yeah as i said uh, uh today i will be talking about i i'll, I'll go a step backward today i am not going to talk about opportunities i am going to talk about something more fundamental i am going to talk about the basic dilemma which i think uh, shakespeare if he was uh, there in today's world he would have said is that what he would say is just give me a minute till i get my system on yeah it is there now yeah uh would be this very simple thing uh shakespeare today would have said basic science to pursue or not to pursue that's the question and as i said uh this is something and i would like to slightly digress from whatever has been the format of these workshops till till uh, till today and uh, would be i like to tell a story because we always believe that the best message is in because this being not really a very formal presentation the best way to go forward would be to talk about stories so i'm just going to tell you some random stories which should impress you the necessity to do basic research and of course i will stop i'll also after talking to you about the brand ambassadors or why we should be doing research i'll also try to tell you some of the opportunities that are away have been made available by the ugc specifically for students in colleges in in basic pure and applied science as well as engineering so that's the plan i have laid out for 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 myself and in case i just lose my link or something i just uh, 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 dr parker just give me a call and alert me sure sure uh, okay okay so so let's start now so as i said the basic question would be to pursue or not to pursue uh, a basic sciences and here i go back to my school days where there was a, a poem by the legendary poet robert frost and i'm sure he wrote this poem for today's day where i would be saying as 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 the legendary poet has said i shall be telling this with pride somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i and i took the road less traveled and that has made all the difference to me today all of us maybe yes uh, uh, when i was at the crossroads of my uh, of after doing 12 we always had this problem should i pursue a professional degree or should i pursue something that is close to my heart and basic sciences was always close to my heart and that is a thing which i have pursued and i am really happy that i have today i can say with pride that i have been able to do the right thing so that's what i would like to always this is a, a, a poem i read when i was doing my thesis i felt as convinced as i was then that i as convinced i am when i look back today at the past as i said there are always this question that is always asked and i always like to present my last slide first because i always believe once you after this last uh, slide which summarizes everything rest is a mere commentary so if somebody were to tell me I, as i said i'll just start off with something philosophical because that's what i learned from my uh, from my mentors was gk mehta that is to achieve success in life you need a brilliant idea and not enough time to achieve it i'll just tweak it around and tell that to achieve success in science you need a an atmosphere that is conducive to original thinking you need to think out of the box it's easier said than done you are expected to have ex equipments necessary to carry out your dreams or whatever you have envisaged but and that's the but which makes science interesting because had everything worked out to your plan had you not faced any hurdles life would be as dull as maybe having a a a, a cup of coffee but a cup of coffee can be as stimulating and can lead you to something fascinating so it's always the buts the hurdles the ifs the hard breaks both literal and and figurative which make basic science as encouraging as they can be so as i said if i were to tell you my 
in one slide, why I should be doing science. I'm sure nobody has thought about this before something which I just thought about it. This is my answer to why you should be doing science. Well, now, now let me try to tell you what I meant to say on this slide. I, 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 I just said, who could have expected that a, that a boy who has grown up in the gullies of Bombay and who comes up from a very middle-class family could have moved, who started his journeys, maybe you were, since this is a, the Mumbai chapter, I have to talk about what we were, we would call, who were, we, we started our journeys when we would go to our, to our, our villages for, for our summer vacation in what we would call the MSRTC, Maharashtra Rajya Parivan Mahamandachi Lal Gadi. Forgive me if I, I, I have used uh, a Marathi, I just could not attempt uh, resisting it. And here I am today, because of what I have done in sciences, I am able to traverse the length and breadth of the country, giving in talks and talking to young people. It's always an opportunity. So it was science which transformed me from a simple, ordinary person going to Ramana and Ruya College, doing his studies, and now coming and speaking before you. So that's what science has opened up. So this is a slide I always, I try to present to youngsters because you somehow need to connect with the material world, however much we may dislike. What else you can see in this slide is, you can see on here, you have our students, you, they have been, you get to work with the best state of the art machinery and equipment. What you're seeing here is basically, I think my pointer is not working. What you're seeing is the, what we call the Indian National Gamma Array. It's the pride of our country, the very big nuclear organize, uh, the big gamma detector, uh, the, uh, the, the array. And what you're seeing here is you have students working with it. And you can see, I have my two doctoral students working when we had a problem with the detector. The detectors cost about a crore each. So you have an equipment which is about, which is costing about a crore and you have 10, 20 of them at a time. And you see them that the students get to handle it. They're actually repairing a detector on site because when we do an experiment, as I told you, you have an equipment there, but there's always a but. So when you have a but, you people start working on it, they, they repair it. So once you handle the state of the art, sophisticated machinery, it gives you a different level of confidence. It prepares you for the harsh reality. It prepares you to take on any challenge that you can think of. On the, uh, the other uh, left-hand panel I've shown is, who else could have, it, it, it is a dream of every scientist to be able to present his work before our, what we would call our people's president. And this was a rare window of opportunity where our beloved uh, president, uh, late Professor Abdul Kalam visited us when we were setting up this INGA facility. I, a person like me with my mediocre background and I could not have envisaged that I would get an opportunity to showcase my power work. Of course, it's a collaboration before our ideal. So that's what science gives you an opportunity. What does science do more to you? I, it gives you an opportunity, except in the area of classical music. There's no other area I can think of where you really can present your work before your mentor. You can see me, I'm presenting my work before my postdoctoral mentor, Professor Umesh Gar, whose style and thoughts have helped me formulate this talk, along with some of the lectures that I heard from Professor D.K. Shivasto. So it just whatever I heard from them, them talking on this topic, I'm trying to tell you in my own limited world. So that's what science, this is a slide which would tell you why you should be doing science. And last but not the least, you can see a person like me going, as I said, I have been doing how to improve teaching using open source resources to beat the resource channel. I have the opportunity to come and speak before the vice chancellors and tell them about some of the new teaching methodologies that they can adapt in their university. So this slide should tell you and to answer your question, to pursue or not to pursue is not the question. The answer is we need to pursue basic sciences. Having said that, I think the rest of my storytelling is just going to be a commentary. I'll try to tell you what you need to do if you are doing basic sciences, what are the challenges, what are the hurdles, and how you, you can do it. One of the criticisms 
Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible. Yeah, because uh, so somehow since in this medium, I'm, I don't see my audience. It's somehow you have a kind of a disconnect. So please bear with me if, uh, uh, if my link breaks or something like that. So one of the criticisms you face when doing basic science is the critics tell us where are the applications. And this is a slide on ancient India, which should answer the critics of basic science. This zero concept of Shunya, Shunya is everything, or is nothing. So everything comes out of basic science. So you do basic science and rest assured applications will follow. This should silence the critic. No other better slide than to start with time immemorable and Kase, this concept of Shunya, which really has given us everything in the present digital world. So basic science is important. Please do not cut it off. Applications will automatically follow. I guess in this, this slide is the best example in contemporary times. Professor Lee, he was a physicist at the CERN. And as I told you, my previous slide told you, do basic sciences applications will follow. And similarly, scientific need is the mother of all invention. In fact, today, this very meeting that we are having is possible only because of the need that the scientists felt at that point of time to come out and have an efficient means to share their data, make data accessible, open up the digital highway. So it was the need felt by the large collaboration at CERN to share data efficiently between the participants that set the World Wide Web today. What you see is the first World Wide Web server, which was on a Macintosh. And today, had there we would have no world would have been possible without the web. So that is the significance of doing basic sciences. The need to circumvent definitely gives you rise to invention. Now, as I said, I like to talk about this slight talk. When I'm talking about computers, World Wide Web, we all come and talk about computer bugs. But this is a slight digression I would like to have. I'll, uh, is that the concept of a computer bug allowed a mathematician to have her work reported in the National Geographic channel, uh, the, 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 the magazine. Professor Harper, who was a mathematician lady working on UNIVAC, the first computer, actually found out there was a computer malfunctioning of a relay because of a literal bug in the computer. So she pulled it out. It was logged, and that gave us the word bug in computer terminology. I look at it entirely differently. This was the starting of multidisciplinary research. You had a mathematician working on a computer, which is an electrical marvel, using the concepts of biology and setting up the term which we all use today. And there, in fact, people like us who have been doing programs. I'm, I'm sure today I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Rajamani from Indore, who is a computational physicist. He has a lot of bugs in his program and the users keep on literally breathing down his neck. So this is where what basic science gave an opportunity. You had a mathematician working on a computer using the biotechnique and the rest is history as we know. So this is the kind of the challenge which set about the need to do multidisciplinary research. As I said, when I'm talking basic sciences, I'm talking of research, which in different terms would mean sanshodan, gaveshna, anusandan, and then comes development. So research is the first step to achieve development. And basic science is the one which gives you the window of opportunity. Traditionally, when I'm talking of basic sciences, I'm talking about physics, chemistry, biology. And when I talk about biology, I like to look at it as micro and macro. Looking at microorganism, and, and today is the classic present day world where we know that the entire macro world has been shattered by a microorganism. When I talk of chemistry, I talk of physical and organic chemistry. When I talk of physics, 
I will talk of the scales at which we address matter. It could be femto or it, it could be nano. Of course, there is one more dimension, which is the dimension of galaxies. But to a physicist like me, nuclear physicist like me, I like to look at the femto level, whereas my, uh, my colleagues from condensed matter are satisfied at the nano. Both of them have fascinating things to tell us. So this was what was their technology, was the traditional well, outlook of basic sciences. But today, the, the boundaries between them have vanished. Today, we no longer talk of basic sciences, but a fusion, a holistic fusion of all these tech, of all these concepts are emerging out from what we call the multidisciplinary research. So today is an era of multidisciplinary research where everything, the boundaries have vanished. You, you, you may find a chemist talk, uh, talking more about physics and a physics person talking more of a biology because they use the tools that they have, they have developed to look at these areas. So now what is the life cycle for a scientist? Somebody has said, born mister and died doctor. And he has traversed the world like this. That is, you start off from schooling, you do your bachelor's, which takes about three years. Hopefully you have not got any drops. Uh, two years onwards, you get your master's degree and this sets you up for your doctoral research. And in fact, here I'd like to digress and tell you a small story of a Professor Bernal, because she was the one who as a doctoral student gave her thesis advisor his Nobel Prize. That's a slight unfortunate miss that she discovered pulsars, the rotating neutron stars as a PhD student. So en route to your PhD, you may be as lucky or as misfortune as Professor Burnwell when you do a Nobel Prize winning experiment right at your doctoral degree. Once you have your doctoral degree under your belt, you then do about a two years postdoc, two, three, four, five. This is the most uncertainty in the life cycle of a person planning a career in pure sciences. But once you have got your master, your postdoctoral degree, you get into a cycle, you have job opportunities, either like a scientist like, uh, like Vivek, or you go into academics, and then get into the grind of migrating from an assistant or associate professor to a full prof or a senior. So that is the life cycle you would expect if you are to plan a career in basic sciences. So as we said, born mister, I'm using a mister just for a human being and died doctor, courtesy Bombay University, courtesy TIFR or courtesy whichever institute you have got your doctoral degree from. As I said, if you look now the beauty of any branch in, in the basic sciences, physics or chemistry, you are able to address problems which have direct relevance in the present world. I was talking to my friend in, in, in chemistry and I told him, why don't you give me a slide which will show, show me the applications of chemistry in the modern day. And that's what he presented me. Physical chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, Every single branch has a direct connect with the modern day life. And this slide, again, is, was one of the best examples as to why you should be pursuing basic science. You can talk about drugs. You can talk about ma making new materials. The, 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 uh, the entire domain is, the sky is literally the limit for you. As I said, I'm using chemistry just as an example. But this is true across the board. So you actually, and this has been made more possible because of the multidisciplinary nature. Chemists borrow idea from physicists, physicists borrow idea from biologists, biologists borrow from mathematics, and the synergy goes on. So multidisciplinary science has made it possible for us to carry out refund ranking research. Now, me being a physicist, if I have to tell you why you should be doing physics, you see, physics teaches you mechanics. It teaches you quantum physics, condensed matter, nuclear and atomic and electronics. And if I look at it in a slightly different perspective, each one of them has a need for computation. 
and once you are into the fascinating world of computers i will i i i will come to a classic example to the end of my talk you are ready for a job market because finally whatever you may say basic science is very stimulating every at the end there is a place or a need to have a job you need something to feed yourself and your family so basically if you are doing physics one way of looking at why i should do physics is physics is intricate with computations and bang on you are prepared because once you start getting into computation you start looking at analysis you start working out methodologically and you are set for the rough road ahead am i audible or any other questions till now yeah yeah you are audible go ahead so as i said i like to retweak this slide and show it like this that when i am doing physics i learn mechanics mechanics is associated with machines when i do physics i do quantum physics which is everywhere today in fact my latest tv has a quantum dot or a, or a quantum old whatever that means i do, when i do physics i do condensed matter condensed matter makes available devices for example when i did my phd my my pride was a 50 uh, or 50 uh, Five megabytes of a big five and a half of a disk drive from deck computer, and my son today has on his Apple iPod two terabytes of memory. That has been made possible by the advances in condensed matter. Atomic and nuclear physics has revolutionized the world. Electronics we just cannot survive without it. So life is all about physics. Of course, when I'm saying physics, it base physics, chemistry, biology, all. multidisciplinary which is woven to together and you see engineering is nothing and basic science tells you to look at it how why things function if we try to address the basic an engineer when he looks at the bounce trap he just thinks about it how does it work and can it be improved but a physicist or when i'm using the word physicist i'm using it as generic for a scientist will try to understand why does it work and once you go to the nitty gritty the nuts and the bolts you can make a better mouse trap so this is the basic difference in the perspective you're looking at two different prisms an engineer and a, a scientist both have equally important perspective but unfortunately in today's world it is the mba guy who will then decide at what price he is going to sell it becomes the boss of both these two people at the harsh reality but this is the importance of science at all it tries to basically disconcern how things work you try to address the problems make it better and in the end you have completed the cycle of design development actually seeing it work and hopefully you you are entitled for a right uh, raise in your increment at the end of the year and that fulfills your materialistic requirement as i said another way of uh, looking at the importance of science is engineering is the confluence of science maths and technology engineering so basis of any engineering marvel still unquestionably is basic sciences and most of the engineering marvels in the ancient world harness the power of natural resources for example the great panchakti of aurangabad or if you look at the classic poem where they talk of antiplater of telesonica it is the first reference to the water wheel so the water wheel was a boon and it let freedom come to the people at that point of time so that is the importance of science science is the basis for any engineering marvel which has helped make the lay of this world less labor intensive so you can go to do if you ever visit aurangabad you will see panchakki which really harness the power of water stored at a height to grind flour and help people so that is the importance of science in our human society of course science has been at crossroads with power there can be numerous examples 
And here's what I always try to tell my friends in the Western world, that whenever we talk of science at crossroads with power, I cannot think of many examples from our ancient Indian context. Most of this come to our mind is when we talk of Western philosophy, there's nothing against the Western society, but at some point it tells us the relevance science had in even our ancient Indian culture. In, in, in fact, this is the classic story of uh, Rani, who was a mathematician and he was an expert on bridges. That's what, again, if you look at it, is the basic multidisciplinary science. You're an expert in one field, it is used in the other. He did run into some problem with Napoleon. And on a lighter note, it was his wife who was a friend with the empress of, uh, of uh, France who helped him get out of the trouble spot. But of course, science has always been at crossroads with power. Now, what are the things, the toolkits you need to do scientific study? We always say that you need a keen observation. Observation is a key ingredient for quest of basic knowledge. And whenever I've heard people say this, they give the classic example of Galileo. Galileo meticulously observed the planetary motion and we know what happened best. I'd like to step back and think from the Indian perspective. If you ever see in South India, maybe my friends from South India can, can correct me if, if what I've heard is correct or not. The married couple are asked to go and see Arundhati Nakshatra. Now, Arundhati Nakshatra happens to be the only binary star where both the constituents revolve or move around their common center of mass. So our ancient Indian astronomers did have the knowledge that otherwise most of the binary stars, one rotates around the other. But Arundhati Nakshatra is the only binary star where they both equally revolve or move around the common center of mass. This was possible in those days only because of the key sense of observation. So if you need to do science, you have to have an unparalleled, unskating skill of observation. And no better example than from our old ancient Indian story. What else you need if you have to do basic sciences? You need tenacity, you need computational skill. I'm sure all my computer friends would tell you how difficult they tell when they have to diagnose the Hamiltonian. But let me take you some years back where we had a person called uh, Sri Shikdar who was actually a human computer. This is a term that is, was used by the then erstwhile East India Company to have people do numerically intensive computation. And he was hired to calculate the height of Mount Everest. And you can imagine way back in early 90s, they had nothing but plain trigonometry. And using trigonometry and a precise knowledge of the winds, the, shire, the effects of temperature with altitude and many, many minor details, they were able to calculate the height of Mount Everest which the present day GPS have been able to change by maybe less than a percent. So that is what you need. You need tenacity, you need computational skill, you need to know how you can uh, apply whatever things you learn at your basic school. After 10 plus two, we stop learning. Rest is commentary and use them to get deduce the component. So you need observation, you need tenacity, you need computational skill, and this is a slide which I always like to share that this slide convinces the critics of basic sciences. The need to do basic sciences is as fundamental as the fact that none other than the Nobel Peace Prize Committee awarded to Professor Furlong, to uh, Borlong for his contributions in developing for very efficient kinds of price. And they said, that if you're able to feed the person, a hungry person with a bread, you would have solved the world's most of the major problems. That will bring peace to the human society. So the relevance of something which one did in the field 
was felt by the Nobel Peace Prize Committee enough to order, uh, to give him the Nobel Peace Prize. And he had made a statement that there has to be a minimum time gap delay between the scientific knowledge and the farmer's know-how. Again, it is used genetically between scientific knowledge and translating it into technology, but technology never comes on its own. It always has its base as a science. What else you need to do? So as I said, I'll be crisscrossing trying to talk about stories. So please feel, me, uh, feel free to stop me and tell me if some of the folklore that I've heard are wrong. Cal collaboration. Collaboration is the key to do basic science, uh, to do modern day sciences. If I need something, I usually call up my friend, Dr. Parker and say, hey, Vivek, you have this a target or you have this detector. Or I, I ask my friends at Indore or whoever, do you have this characterization facility? So collaboration is the key. And if you visit Calcutta, which is the city of joy for us, you'll see there's something called the Princep Ghat. And here, what I'd like to tell you is, so Pr Princep was an architect. He was involved with renovations of old buildings. And when he started doing it, he found there were inscriptions on it. And he started collecting this inscription. When people knew that he was collecting inscription, they kept on sending him more and more updates. And he basically deciphered Pali, the language of prosperous ancient India, which was lost, was deciphered by Princep. And because of this, the whole world was introduced to the greatness of Emperor Ashok. We had lost information about Ashok, but because Pali, it was most of the information then was in Pali, but it was Princep who was an architect. He had interest in this inscription, studied them meticulously, deciphered them, and the boon was given to the human society. So this is a classic example, again, where you have somebody doing a train in some other field, meticulously follows the principles of basic science, deciphers Pali, and reintroduces to the modern day world the greatness of Emperor Ashok. Others, where would be today without this kind of thing? So it's a collaboration, again, perseverance, tenacity, skill, which is required to do basic. As, 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 as I told you, it's always a but. You, to do science, you need an idea, you need ex equipment, but you never get what you want. But again, as I said, you try to win over the odds. I'm, 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 I'm sure my uh, Dr. Uh, uh, the Vivek, who uses, is a charge particle detector person, will tell you that it's really difficult to make gaseous detectors. And way back in 1930s, we had Professor Shamalda Chatterjee, who set up a beautiful ionization chamber in the Bose Institute in Calcutta. He did an experiment, and we would have discovered spontaneous fission. Had his boss not been convinced of his results, the discovery would have not gone to the Russians. And when he did this, his boss told him, and the, um, Professor Satyendranath Bose told him, that you have to make sure that your readings are not affected by atmospheric muons. So he had to take the reading and make sure they were not from atmospheric background radiation. So he designed what is known as the present day coincidence circuitry. He did his experiments. Unfortunately, the results were too good for the bosses to believe and they just leapt over it and the thing went to the Russian. So model of the story is make sure you have a boss who is ready to take the risk and send your publication out as, and the rest would have been history. But this is a classic example of how you can circumvent the problems that you're faced with your sheer ingenuity. You need an idea, you need equipment, but if you don't have them, you have your uh, imagination and technology to circumvent them and then rest would be history. As I said, every time I'm showing you that science has progressed, but this is an example where we really see that whatever we, science we did in 19, uh, this was maybe late 1890s, uh, is still relevant today. And this is a slide 
from the paper published by Professor Herring, Professor Bering, which was the starting point for vaccination. This is way back in 1890, where he said that blood is a special juice. That's what is written in German, because they found out the way for diphtheria vaccination was you, you inoculate the guinea pigs with diphtheria virus, they develop antigens, take it out, and you give it to the patient. So that, even today, the vaccine technology has not changed. So everything has not changed by leaps and bounds in science. And uh, Professor Herring Waring was the first Nobel Prize winner for nuclear medicine. But there's a sad end, uh, dimension to the story. It is rumored that his colleague, Professor Paul Enrich, was not given the credit for this discovery. But this is a classic example, if I have to tell to somebody, that this did not discourage Professor Paul. He set about continuing with his research. And by 1913, he had won. Uh, in, in 1908, he won the Nobel Prize for his path breaking work on immunology, and he is said to be the forefather of chemotherapy. And he was nominated for Nobel Prize 76 times. So here you have a classic example that failures should not let you down. It's perseverance and your hard work finally will bear the fruits of it. I'm tempted to show this slide because Professor Hafkin was the founder or the inventor of the vaccine for the plague vaccine. And if you ever read the Indian freedom history, uh, struggle history, the Britishers used plague to go after the freedom fighters. The famous Safekar Bandhu story, people who are from Pune and Bombay would know about it. So it was this plague vaccine developed by Professor Hafkin, which starts, uh, it was almost like the biblical plague. And a lot of lives were lost. The plague had was able in, was able to be uh, we were able to circumvent it because of the vaccine developed by Pro, by Professor Hafkin and these are beautiful lines which he says which tells you this is why you should do basic science that is the life your span on this earth is too short and when time your call comes from the Almighty you should be satisfied and no other field gives you the gives you satisfaction than pursuing basic science. Uh, another classic example, all of us as nuclear physicists know Professor Lawrence. He was the founder of Cyclotron. Berkeley is our dream destination. We want to go and do experiments at Berkeley. But the nuclear medicine was started by him and his brother the day they discovered Cyclotron. And it is rumored that Sir Lawrence used Cyclotron to treat one of his close, close relatives uh, against cancer. So actually it was the Lawrence brothers who set up the uh, use of radiation for humanity. So as I said, science has direct spin-off for humanity. I, another classic, what you need to do in science is you need a stroke of luck and you need perseverance. And no better example than the Nobel Prize for penicillin. If you are doing quizzes when we would do, we would always say, who discovered penicillin? Sir Alexandra Fleming. But it was a chance of stroke that Alexandra Fleming discovered penicillin. He forgot about it. He knew he was able to explain why certain molds of bacteria were not infected. And he said goodbye to penicillin. It took almost 26 years for the other two people to develop penicillin have commercialized penicillin and penicillin was the savior in the world war because most of the lives that are lost in the battlefield are because of infections and not because of the bullet wounds from the enemy so this is a classic example the three gentlemen when they won the nobel prize for for penicillin alexander fleming discovered it forgot about it well it was his keen observation and the other two gentlemen meticulously were able to develop, develop penicillin. X-rays, X-rays are, ex we all know about X-rays. They were discovered by William Ronkin. But he was the first Nobel Prize uh, a winner of X-rays. But what people really do not know is the story about this slide. 
the photograph 51. That's one of the best photographs that Times has said in, uh, according to the Times magazine, it was taken by Professor Franklin. She was a crystallographer. And photograph 51 was the X-ray diffraction of the human DNA. Photograph 51 was taken by a student. She immediately realized its significance. And unfortunately, her strong opponents, her competitors, Frank, Frank and Watson and Creek, immediately realized that this kind of photograph can only come from a double helixical structure. And that's how they got their Nobel Prize. Four years after the sad demise of Professor Franklin, who always remain an unsung hero in the discovery of DNA. Without the discovery of DNA, we would not have survived the pandemic of today. So this came up because of her knowledge of crystallography, which she used. And the uh, photograph 51 is credited to be the best. So again, you had a tool of pure science developed by somebody, used in applied, and you know, rest is, is magic. I'll just skip the, uh, the, some of these parts and then come to this because I think I'm, I'm, I'm running short of time. So after the brand ambassadors, let's look at the moment of truth. So if you want to do pursue science, I think by now I have convinced you that yes, it is a life as a scientist, as an academician is worth all these troubles, which of course would be there in any other field. So if you were to pursue it, we have institute like ours, which is an inter-university center, which is meant to help university people embark on the research. As I said, we have on one hand, the Department of Atomic Energy, which is mega science facility. On the other hand, we have the universities, colleges with the basic pool, and we have the best brains. At least we think we have the best brains in our colleges. And an institute like ours, which is the UGC DAE Consortium for Scientific Research, helps to bridge both these two huge pools together, the scientific technology, and the human resources and make available to the young college to, uh, uh, students and teachers these mega facilities of the Department of Atomic Energy. We at the Calcutta, as I said, we have three centers located at Bombay, Indore, and Calcutta, where we have the three mega science facilities of the DAE. So Calcutta Center looks after accelerators, the Indore Center looks after the synchrotron, and our Bombay Center, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if, if my colleague, Dr. Joshi has joined me from Bombay, they look after the reactor facility. So all these facilities are available to the university people for their research at no cost. I'll just come to it in, in a minute. And I, I, as I told you, we do use radiation to study living as well as non-living matters. And as the, as the great Gurudev has said at Calcutta Center, we try to understand science, which comes out from the depths and the truth of the gamma rays or the radiation. Our centers that we have help students right from their bachelor's, master's, and their PhD level. We, we are, the students are welcome to write to us. We encourage their projects. We support their projects. As I said, they can come and stay with us. They stay, as I said, these are very small things, but very important thing, we take care of their lodging, boarding, expenses. They do projects with us. The projects can be for your BSc. They can be for your master's. They can be for the ME, since we also deal and teach uh, courses on nuclear instrumentation and nuclear reactors. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing. They can come and spend some time with us. We support everything. And besides that, we have what we call the collaborative research schemes wherein a person who can, uh, his guide can write up to us, we support a project for three years, wherein we provide him all the facilities, we provide him a fellowship for three years to do the research, and most important is none of our facilities are chargeable. So if somebody wants to do an XID with us, he just has to write to us. Once we are convinced of his scientific uh, merit of the proposal, his travel, etc., is all paid by us, he comes, he does an experiment with us, 
we in fact sit with him help him understand the uh, the so we literally hold hands right from the bachelor degrees to the phd degrees and after that we say goodbye because we cannot say uh, we cannot ensure that you get a job but let me tell you that almost all the students who have done phd's with us have ended up getting job so this slide which i've showed about the unclear physics group because almost everybody calls our nuclear physics group as an unclear physics group most of the, all of them have got jobs in fact i'll just take your minute to show you that this is the book which was written by my first student dr pattabhi raman who came from a small village in tamil nadu never seen a computer before joining us and when he left us he left us to become a member of the anci iso triple ie committee on c so that is what basic research can do most of our other students have got jobs as a faculty length and breadth of the country some of them are settled abroad some of them are doing the post doctoral studies so as i said once you get trained in the state of the art facilities jobs are bound to be there of course it may not come at the pace and the place you desire but definitely you can rest assured the training does not go waste and all of us are living examples that yes there are no marks for standing second in life but at the same time there a person with the requisite skill set will not be left jobless of course as i said the pace and the place may differ but you definitely end up getting because science as i told you if you are doing science and you can see these are the young people who are running a national facility as i told you it cost us about 20 to 30 crores to set up this facility and it's all run by young people you will not see gray headed people like me around and when you do handle such a facility you learn about vacuum you learn about mechanical engineering you learn about electronics you learn about computers and last but not the least you learn about physics and if you are trained in so many fields jobs are bound to be there so as i said institutes like ours are right there to hold hands from your bachelor's time master's time phd time and i think we train you strong enough that you guys should definitely get a job because at the end of the day it is the job market which will decide whether you choose a particular topic or not but of course the spin off is to really enjoy what you do so if you enjoy what you do and you can make a decent living out of it i don't think there is anything better than than basic sciences i think there is this book which has been there which should tell you about the various and today nowadays the government of india and the fellowship that you get is pretty decent as a phd scholar you almost get what you would get at an entry level professor post minus the uh, income tax so definitely the funding opportunities are numerous various agencies the dst ugc dbt csir everybody is reaching out to people who want to pursue basic sciences because basic science is the building block of the future human society you can read about this wonderful book that, that is there from the uh, uh, from the insa which talks about the various funding uh, opportunity but as i said all this knowledge is there on the uh, on the public domain you just have to be convinced that yes it is worth taking a plunge in 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 basic sciences so as the great hymn of creation in the in in the rigveda which says that maybe he knows or maybe he knows not but i would like to tweak it and say when it comes to doing something that you want to do please pursue something which is closer to your heart and i think i'll stop here with this thank you thank you uh, professor gugre for very uh, encouraging talk very inspiring talk i think people have must have motivated by, by listening to your talk uh, i hope so huh. yeah so i invite the questions from the audience now uh, if there are any questions you can raise your hand or you can type it in the chat box so raise hand option is there uh, in your uh, zoom so you can use that as i said i i just wanted to talk about yes it is it is very nice to do as i said it's worth doing basic science and i said i'll not show a typical slide which is done in an mba fashion but i'll just tell you some of the stories which i have 
heard at various points of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very nice, very, very encouraging. Uh, okay, so there is one question from uh, one of our uh, collaborator, uh, Salini. Uh, yeah. She is saying that uh, physics or doing BSc generally considered as last option after the professional courses. Uh, although recently IIC ISR has been able to promote and student uh, promote it, the students uh, for choosing BSc uh, in various subjects. But till today, uh, getting job becomes a little, little difficult compared to the any other professional courses like BA and BTech. Uh, so to improve the job opportunity, uh, is it advisable to go for MSc or PhD or just doing BSc is enough? Are there any uh, opportunities for only BSc graduates? I I am I think slowly the job market is changing for engineering fields because there are too many engineers now. So basically nowadays people are finding that after doing an engineering, it is not becoming that much of a financially rewarding. So now the backflow has started. Whereas people after doing physics or chemistry or biology, because of the skill set that they, that they develop, they know, as I said, my friend in, uh, in chemistry is a wonderful person who does computations. So definitely he, he gets picked up by a, by a drug company, by, by a pharmaceutical company and he gets a job. So slowly it is changing. Again, the pace is slightly slow, but I think many of the present day generations also now are opting that if you don't get into the premier engineering institute, they just don't go for engineering, but they, they decide to come for either basic sciences or economics or statistics. I think the trend is changing. Yes, exactly. Like going for basic sciences now and also there is support from government as, as well. Yeah, and the funding is excellent. As I said, all of our students whom we support for five years, they earn about, if you're in Calcutta, they earn about 40,000. Is, 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 is there any money? So I think that gives them a basic decent livings. And once you're, of course, you should not just do an also ran PhD. Or if you do hafnium and do hoopnium, that is not going to give you a job. But when you're doing your PhD, the skill set, the confidence to tackle any problem, that confidence does give you its, 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 its reward. As I said, it will not be at the pace and the place that you want it, but definitely you, you, will, you, will, you will get a job somewhere. Okay. Uh, there is another, another question from Satvik. Uh, he's asking about any details related to summer projects for bachelor students. As I said, what we there are there are almost all scientific institutes have this bachelor student program. You just write to them, and 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 some of them have more formal bachelor program. For example, our institute, we don't have a formal program. So when the students write to us, depending on his convenience and our convenience, we invite him over. He comes and spends three months with us. All expenses taken care of. He's fed decently three meals a day. He's given all the support to do his project. So I think there is a lot of informality in smaller institutes like us, whereas bigger institutes like TFR, VCC, uh, they have a rigid structure. But again, I think almost all institutes have a bachelor because we need to pick them young. And our experience has been whoever has done a project with us. In fact, their parents have cursed us because we have influenced them to take up master's some of them have gone even to go uh, gone on to do their PhDs both in the country as well as abroad. So that's quite rewarding for us at least. Yeah. In fact, he has shown one book also, a reference book, where uh, that uh, fellowship and uh, opportunities for the school students. You will find most of the opportunities are, uh, are listed in that book. So anybody interested uh, for that, you can go into the Insta website and you can find that book there. And, and, and just one more thing is you can, if, if nowadays in the age of internet, you just drop us a mail and uh, it, things work out. Yeah. So it's not really that much of a formal uh, problem. Okay. Uh, another question from Sharini. Uh, she's asking about, uh, do you find re relocation is challenging? What is your advice to the young students for relocation? Generally, students are hesitant and very specific to choosing location during their career. And I think what is important, like for, 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 for example, I have moved out of Bombay in 1990s and I don't regret it. Many, in fact, at our institute, we have a lot of people who have come. In fact, it's very important for a national institute to have a national character. Then only things will grow. This is, again, my 
my personal uh, opinion to it but relocation nowadays with the kind of communication i don't think is a problem yes i have heard stories from my father that it took 3 days for him to come from vijayadurg to mumbai and 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 today in 3 days people go to usa and 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 come back so it's more of a mindset and yes finally if you enjoy what you do of course it uh, relocation comes at a hefty personal price i'm not going to deny that but as i said it's a personal decision to be made not too bad of a day. and with the present day kind of communication technology i don't think relocation is a major problem yeah okay uh, any more questions uh, people are appreciating your talks there are a lot of comments on the chat box for this one thanks day. thanks a lot vivek i i i, I think you 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 gave me that uh, opportunity to come and talk to young people because it's always better yeah so as i said this is just what i try to tell about whatever i feel about why you should be doing science yeah yeah okay you need to move away because nowadays engineering is really getting highly competitive yes exactly. and science when you do all these kind as i said our own students uh, i think you i think somebody was telling me that one of the students who has worked with you is now going to do an experiment and at gamma sphere yes yes he's going there so so that that's what this world has come to yeah. i think from nit surat right NIT, yes 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 so you see people coming from very very humble background who started with going on the bombay sandwadi st today are are going around the world as as i said vivek is a classic example that's what science does uh one more question from shalini uh she is mm-hmm. asking about do you think young minds have more challenges compared to senior faculties and how can the young generation do their best and optimize their career uh i think challenges at uh, are basically time dependent i cannot compare the challenge faced by my thesis supervisor faced by me today and faced by my student they uh, they, they have to be viewed in their own respective time frame today maybe the ease of technology has some negative effect because as i said we were forced to read journals which i don't find in the today's generation today that so as i said challenges are are of different kinds to be viewed given the particular time frame our challenges always there faced by my supervisor maybe years back but yes we all face challenges we all ha- have to devise our own ways to overcome them yeah and i said our institute inter university centers like ours are there to help the university community do research that's our mandate yeah okay very nice so uh, any more questions from the audience uh thing from the youtube side okay one more question one minute okay uh one question from uh, youtube uh, csr net is required at your research institute or any other uh, fellowship okay uh, there are two answers to it now what happens is if you want to become our student the institute student we require csr net or jest if you get uh, because we also support crs projects so crs projects can take in a student who is not net net qualified but if he wishes to enroll for phd he has to qualify some exam or the other now there may be a student from bombay university who registered with say let's say with a faculty in bombay who has a crs with us he has to qualify the mumbai university ret to be able to get enrolled for phd so if you are our own institute student we require either that gate or jest however in the individual collaborative schemes you can get a fellowship without being a net scholar but if you want to register for phd in that institute you will have to clear some examination because that is the ugc mandate if you say i just want to work for 3 years and then say tata bye bye then that's not a problem but i think what we try to do is each of the project should lead to a phd because that is how we can develop human resources yes 
Okay, so I, I don't see any more questions on YouTube or neither in Zoom. So we can stop here. Uh, yeah. once, once again, thank you very much for this inspiring talk. I, I hope... Ple my, my, my pleasure and privilege. Thank, thank. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, we'll, okay. we'll stop here now.